With all the great work that goes into video games, voice acting can be one of the most important aspects. It's performed by the likes of Troy Baker, Nolan North, Laura Bailey, Keith David, and many more that bring life to the characters that we know and love. Not every video game can boast amazing voice acting all the time, though, either due to the budget, localization, or poor direction. Let's take a look at 10 games with some of the worst ever performances. Deep Fear Chief! You don't have to yell, Mookie. I can hear you just fine. It's an emergency. Sharon's drowning in the e pool. Come quickly. I'm right above you. I'll be right there. Among the many quality horror titles lost to history, Sega's Deep Fear definitely warrants a mention. Despite Resident Evil still being at the height of its popularity, Deep Fear's tale of ex-Navy SEAL John Mayer as he investigates the Sea Fox submarine and big table facility for mysterious parasites still earned praise. With excellent sound design and music, the latter composed by Kenji Kawaii of The Ring fame, what could possibly kill the horror mood? The voice acting, unfortunately. It comes across as monotone at times and downright corny at others, marring the dialogue and any sense of tension. Plus, the less said about Du Bois Amalric, the designer of the Sea Fox and Big Table, the better. Oh, there's no problem with my Sea Fox system. No accident should have occurred. Oh. NBA 2K15. Move, man. What are you doing? We got our foot in the door. The Raptors have offered you a 10-day deal. Why not a year? Because you're an undrafted, unproven commodity. But they saw enough to take a flyer on you. Back before it became a nightmarish wonderland of in-game advertisements and microtransactions, the NBA 2K series received lots of praise for its gameplay and presentation. Sometimes the voice acting wasn't always up to snuff, though. A good example is NBA 2K15's My Career Mode, which, despite featuring some decent performances, also had a number of downright horrible ones. So you're the rookie that's going to shock the world, huh? Sure as heck gonna try. Good. I'm glad you're here. Just remember, it's all out there for you. Al Jefferson sounds like he's half mumbling many of his lines when they're not being delivered in monotone fashion. Markeith Morris is seemingly in danger of falling asleep. The lackluster facial animation with barely moving lips and dead expressions doesn't help many of these scenes either. WWE 2K19 what the hell do you think you're doing interrupting my 100th episode celebration? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm saving these people from having to endure any more boredom. Instead, I'd like to give them something actually worth watching. WWE 2K22 helped redeem the series when it was released this year, but its predecessor, WWE 2K20, was The Pits. On the bright side, WWE 2K19 was markedly better, especially thanks to My Career Mode, with its storyline and overall good performances by the likes of Triple H, AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, and Daniel Bryan. There's sadly one exception, though, the franchise himself, John Cena. It's not his own voice, that much is obvious, but it's not even a good impersonation. Did developer Yuki's pick up one of the many John Cena's used during his WrestleMania 25 entrance? Possibly, and the results are eerie to listen to. And you think that's all it is for me? I busted my for everything I have. And will continue to do so until someone has to drag me out of that ring. Guys, you have a match coming up. Exodus from the Earth. What a clown. Is he the reason why you've taken me out for my holiday? We're lack of time, Frank. The sun is very unstable and will soon destroy everything. The Earth has only 20 years, Frank. 20 years. Exodus from the Earth is a rather strange title. Originally released in Russian, its English localization in 2008 ranged from intriguing to downright confounding at times. For example, when protagonist Frank Rickson sneaks into a X corporation, he's told, you'll knock down the locks with this axe. Try not to excite the security. You'll knock down the locks with this axe. Try not to excite the security. But even for the regular lines, the deadpan delivery comes across as unintentionally funny. Everyone has the excitement level of a glass of water, whether it's during a tense shootout or walking from point A to B. One doesn't expect the highest voice acting budget for titles like this, but having everyone be awake during recording would have been nice. Tenchu Stealth Assassins Money is power! Power is everything! <laughs> 
It's not just the relatively unknown or poorly localized titles that suffer from some terrible voice acting performances. Acquire's Tenchu Stealth Assassins, released in 1998 for the PlayStation 1, published by Sony in Japan and Activision in the West. A masterpiece of stealth design, it was notorious for its brutal difficulty and renowned for its gorgeous graphics at the time. However, it also has some unique performances. The Jailer in the third mission, for example, needs to be heard to be believed when saying, I know what you want. You want the stone, it's safe inside my belly. I know what you want. You want a stone. It's safe inside my belly. It is hilarious to slay the boss and hear Ayami proclaim, that's my precious stone now afterwards though. Onikage isn't much better, especially when proclaiming that Lord Goda's castle has been breached. Clock Tower, 1996. Yellow, police department. There's been a murder. Come quickly, please. Please relax, ma'am. Did you see the murderer? Human Entertainment's Clock Tower is a direct follow-up to the 1995 cult classic, actually released in Japan as Clock Tower 2 for the PlayStation 1. Though not as well received as the first game, it still earned a good amount of critical praise and is generally considered one of the scariest games ever. The problem, as with the first Resident Evil and Deep Fear, is that the voice acting often trips up. Between the awkward pauses and flat delivery, each character feels like they're being dragged through molasses. Professor Samuel Barton deserves special mention in this case, talking about how fascinating the Clock Tower murders are for his research, while sounding like he'd rather be anywhere else. Mortal Kombat 4 By defeating you, Sub-Zero, I have avenged the death of my family and clan. Now my soul can finally rest. I'm not gonna lie, Raiden's voice acting in Mortal Kombat 4 carries the appropriate amount of boom and intonation to make him sound threatening. Now for almost everyone else, it's just one comedy routine after another. Jirix, hmm, 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 while laughing is made all the more unintentionally hilarious by the lack of any facial animation or lip syncing. Hearing Jax proclaim, this is not a brutality, this is a fatality, with a straight face is also too much. Surprisingly, Johnny Cage's voice is probably the most fitting, his faux Seinfeld voice coming across as annoying as it should. This is brutality. You can't do it. Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. Hotel Mario. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. For as decorated as the Mario and Zelda franchises are, their Philips CDI titles continue to be a stain on their legacies. Developed by Philips Fantasy Factory, Hotel Mario released in 1994 and is more of a puzzle arcade title than a platformer. For some reason though, someone thought it was a good idea to have animated FMV cutscenes and to also hire voice actors from their local deli. Mario's voice sounds like he'd give Chris Pratt a run for his money and potentially his life as well. It's especially hilarious when Mario breaks the fourth wall to give instructions to the player, awkwardly pausing and looking straight forward afterwards. Admittedly, it is kind of funny hearing Luigi talking about violently persuading a Koopa to lend them a light, but it's all just awful. Mega Man X4 Iris. Iris. Ah! No, this isn't happening. There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Of course, no list of terrible voice acting performances would be complete without mentioning Mega Man X4. Throughout the rather limited animated cutscenes, it's obvious that the voice acting isn't incredible. General sounds muted and kind of tame instead of, well, gruff or intimidating. Colonel sounds completely unenthusiastic, but the worst is probably Zero himself, while coming across as somewhat awkward in many exchanges. It's Iris's death that truly unleashes the cringe, leading to the infamous what am I fighting for line that continues to live in infamy among the Mega Man X fandom. Last alert. Their ability should not be underestimated. Yes, I have someone in mind. Let me handle this. Is it over? He's entrusted me with the task. 
For a game released on the TurboGrafx CD in 1990, it's probably surprising that Sin Nihon Lasersoft's Last Alert even has voice acting. The top-down shooter follows Guy Kazama, a commando sent on a mission to rescue hostages in South America. Obviously a nod to John Rambo, Guy's story is punctuated with very poor localization and performances in the English release. Guy himself sounds like the voices used by True Blade Seeker, you know the ones, and you half expect him to go, okay, I believe you. Some actors also seem to voice multiple characters, judging by how indistinguishable they can be, once again, flat delivery, some very poorly done accents, and horrible intonation ruined the day, even if the cheesiness can be funny at times. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.